It wasn't easy growing up a young boy in Baltimore. But I was a bad kid. Oh, it was a rough, tough neighborhood. But I liked it. I hated school and despised and loathed the coppers. I'm not saying that with any great sense of pride. I'm saying it because I feel that it must be said. Because my one hope is to help some young boy who might be standing today where I stood then. And I wasn't raised in an orphanage like those newspaper fellows like to write. It was St. Mary's Industrial School for Boys. Well, that's where they sent you if you were ruled an incorrigible. I was sent there at the age of seven. Well, I guess drinking and smoking at that age will brand you an incorrigible. It was there that I met the greatest man I've ever known, Brother Matthias of the Zaverian Order, a Catholic order. Now, the brothers work with disadvantaged boys, both here and in Europe. Now, Brother Matthias was the greatest man I've ever known. Oh, he stood six foot five and weighed 250 pounds. But he seldom raised his voice, which was something entirely new to me. Even though, when he spoke, we understood that he meant business. Oh, we weren't afraid of him. It's, it's just that he had a way to gain our respect and our love. When I first appeared at St. Mary's, Brother Matthias took me under his wing. Well, it wasn't that I became his pet. Well, I think that he knew I needed the attention the most. It was Brother Matthias who first saw that I had a talent for throwing and catching a baseball. I became a hitter the first time I saw him hit the baseball. Well, he'd stand at one end of the yard with a finger mitt on his left hand and holding a bat in his right. He'd throw that ball up and give it a mighty whack with a bat that he held in his right hand. Well, in those days, the ball was a little bit more than mush. And by the time I got to St. Mary's, it was much worse. Sometimes, when he felt like it, he hit the ball a little harder and knock it over the fence. Well, that ball had to travel 353 feet, which was quite a wallop in those days. It'd be even quite a poke today when the manufacturers would bring the whole rabbit into the ball. Brother Matthias was my hero. After I saw him bat, I tried to do everything just like him. Well, I even used his toad-in method, which I still use today. Brother Matthias not only taught me how to read and write, but he taught me right from wrong. When I first started playing baseball, I thought that I wanted to be a catcher. Oh, I played the other positions, but catcher was my favorite. Brother Matthias and the others tried to convince me that a left-handed catcher just didn't make sense. It was Brother Matthias that turned me into a pitcher. I was 17 years old. Well, actually, he did it to bring me down a notch. You see, we were playing this other school, and the pitcher out on the mound was getting knocked all over the lot. Well, this kept on happening, and after a while, it started striking me as kind of funny. <laughs> well, when our last pitcher got knocked out of the box, I couldn't hold back any longer. I just burst out laughing. Well, Brother Matthias come running out of the dugout towards the catcher's box and said, What are you laughing at, George? What's so funny? <laughs> well, I said, That guy is standing out there on the mound. <laughs> and I doubled over with laughter. Brother Matthias just stood there and didn't say anything and just looked at me. Well, after a while, he said, Well, all right, George. You pitch. 
Well, I stopped laughing. Well, I've never pitched before, I said. I don't know anything about it. He said, you must know something. You know that your friend out there isn't any good. So you go out there and show him how it's done. Well, I knew he was serious. So I traded in my catcher's glove for a finger mitt and headed out to the mound. Well, I'd never been on a mound before and didn't have the first idea how, how to pitch. But you know, something strange happened when I got out there. When it seemed like I was born to pitch. And after a while, I had no problem getting the ball over the plate and, and striking batters out. I even started trying to throw a curveball in. Well, in kid-like, I stuck out my tongue in the corner of my mouth. Well, that's a habit that stayed with me until my first big league manager, Bill Kerrigan, convinced me that I was telegraphing my curve just by sticking out my tongue. Well, after that, Brother Matthias never let me get too far away from the mound. I'll always think that Brother Matthias was the father figure I needed. Now, I've understood that most fellows who go to school in the manner that I did, later on in life, either refuse to talk about it or put it down, but, well, I'm as proud of St. Mary's as, as any Harvard man is as proud of his school. And if you allow me to get crude for a moment, I'll pop anybody in the beezer who speaks up against it. Well, I graduated from St. Mary's. Tailoring was to be my trade, but baseball won out. Jack Dunn of the minor league Baltimore Orioles asked me if I wanted to sign a contract. And then he started talking about money. I said, you going to pay me to play baseball? $600 a year, he said. Why, that was more money than I thought there was in the whole world at the time. Well, since I was sentenced or I was put in to St. Mary's until I was 21, uh, Mr. Dunn had to become my guardian. So I couldn't leave the school until late February that year. When we arrived at the train station, most of the older players didn't talk to me, which was all right. You see, I was going on my first train ride, and this was going to be the first time that I'd ever been out of Baltimore. I didn't sleep that night, wondering about what was going to happen in the morning and what was going to happen the rest of my life. Well, there was another reason that I didn't sleep. You see, one of the old timers pulled the oldest trick in the book on me. You remember how they had those little hammocks and the sleeping cars for you to put your clothes? Well, he convinced me they put it in there so that I could rest my arm overnight. Well, when that train pulled into the station the next morning, the Baltimore Orioles had their first injury of the year. A rookie by the name of Ruth had a sore and stiff arm from giving us so much care. When we got off the train in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I, I realized it was much warmer there than in Baltimore. Well, I guess I should have studied my geography more in school. Dunn came over to me and said, Hey, kid, uh, since you're not really getting any of your money until after the season starts, I, I'm going to give you an advance of five dollars. Why, that was more money than I'd had in my pocket at one time in my entire life. Oh, and things just kept on getting better. That morning when we were sitting down at a restaurant and going over the menu, one of the players leaned over to me and said, Hey, kid, order what you like. The team picks up your feed, Bill, while you're in spring training. Y you mean I can order whatever I like and... I don't have to pay for it? Well, I was on my third stack of wheat cakes and my third slab of ham when I noticed the rest of the players were just looking at me. 
George Pippen, a, a newspaper writer from the Baltimore Sun, said, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Well, I said, a fella has to be strong to play baseball, doesn't he? Well, later on, when Dunn came by, he saw the ruins and said, hey, George, let the 27 other guys on this team save some for them, will you? Well, I got the nickname Babe early in those days. Well, it seems like Dunn was always bringing in young players and trying to develop them. Well, that morning, he had to lead me from the clubhouse to the pitcher's mound. Well, I was so proud of that Orioles uniform. I was as proud of that as I was my first pair of pants. All the players said, well, look, here comes Don and his new babe. <laughs> well, that started it, I guess. But the, the real clincher came later. Oh, it got to be a, quite a joke how I walked around starry-eyed all the time. Well, I'd even get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and, and go down to the train station just to see the trains come in. <laughs> but you can bet I was always back in time to be the first in line when the restaurant opened. Up until that time, I had never seen much mechanization. But the elevator at the hotel was one of the most wonderful machines I've ever seen. Oh, I'd stand there gawking for hours, watching it go from floor to floor. Well, finally, I couldn't take it any longer. So I bribed the operator with some of the money that Dunn had given me to, to give me a chance to operate it. Well, I was on the third floor with the doors wide open, taking it to the fourth floor, rubbernecking up and down the hall. Within a few seconds, my career, in fact, almost my life ended. When one of the older players yelled out, get your dang full head in, kid! And I did. Well, just in time. Well, when Dunn found out, he chewed the stuff out of me. And what he did to say, the older players said for him. Well, one of them finally said, well, you're just a babe in the woods. Well, after that, they called me babe. Well, that year, Baltimore, in the International League, even though we were in the first place, was having a hard time growing a crowd because the Terrapins of the new Federal League were doing really well at the box office. So in June, Dunn had to start selling off some of his players. He sold Jack Egan and myself to the Boston Red Sox. Well, when I got to the Red Sox, I guess they had heard that I was kind of a wise guy and didn't have any respect for older players. Well, that wasn't true, you see. It's, well, it's just that I wanted them to understand that I was as good as any other pitcher on the Red Sox. The one thing they didn't like the most was the fact that I insisted upon taking batting practice. Well, one day I came to the ballpark and and found that all my bats had been sawed in two. Well, other than that, we got along all right. But that first go around with the Red Sox, I only lasted a month. I pitched in three games, winning two of them. One of my first victories came against the Cleveland Indians. They got five hits off of me, and we beat them four to two. Joe Jackson, that great hitter, got two of the hits. Well, I think that if Joe Jackson hadn't got himself in the doghouse, he'd have gone down as one of the greatest hitters of all time. Well, that ends my time with the Red Sox, because after a month, they sent me down to the minor leagues, the International League, where I pitched for Providence.